welcome to another episode. And as you'll notice, this doesn't look very much like a 650, does it? It's got my visor down, it's quite a windy one. So yeah, this is uh, definitely not a 650. It's nearly double that, in fact. Uh, well, not double the amount of wheels, but double the amount of CCs, not a million miles off. This is an 1150 GS Adventure. Uh, a bit of a step up size-wise. Uh, Power-wise, certainly torque-wise, there's a lot of torque on this. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about this. So, uh, so yeah, this is uh, off the back of my uh, test ride of the 1250. I thought, hey, you know what? That, uh, that, that big boxer twin was uh, very nice. Do I have or want to spend 25 grand on a new one? Well, that's a different question. Um, but would I happily buy a, a used uh, 1150? Not so bad about 1200, so a bit out of budget really to get you know a, an adventure one with the, the right kind of specs and things. But 1150 adventure, taller suspension, knobbly tires, big screen, all the bells and whistles. Oh yes, absolutely. That's uh, what I managed to find. So I bought this in the middle of nowhere in uh, in Wales, up in the Brecon Beacons. Lovely sort of scenery around there, proper uh, you know mountainous territory. Uh, went up after work, got stuck in the traffic going up that way. Um, took me ages to get there. I had a look at it and uh, then went up uh, back. What was it? Bank holiday, start of May, and. Uh, Sophie's mom very kindly gave me a lift and I rode it back. So yeah, it's brilliant. So yeah, compared to the 650, that was a 652cc single. This is an 1150 or 1130cc uh, box twin. 650 had 51 horsepower, was it? 53, something like that. This is 85. This has got a lot more torque. And one of the things as well with the 650, you really had to be in kind of, you know, three, three and a half thousand revs upwards to, for it to be happy. This will pull all the way from tick over up to the red line. You just feel like you can open the taps and, uh, and shift and it really is very, very usable. In the adventure means I've got, I think, 25 mil front and back extra travel compared to the standard GS. Also means it's a single seat rather than the, uh, the, the two part seat they put on the GS, which it turns out for me, it means that I'm really comfortable and Sophie isn't. Apparently with normal GS, the, the, the two-part bench seat that they seem to take from some medieval church, they're horrendously uncomfortable. They're the ones that mean neither rider nor passenger are comfortable. So at least one of us is. On this bike, I'm the one who's comfortable. I was the one who was struggling with the 650 really. My, my crotch was getting beaten up. So yeah, you know, in, in, the, in the comfort regard, it's one step forward, one step back for the two of us because Sophie is not so comfortable, but I am. So we're working on a bit of a, a modification for the back and yeah, see how we get on. But in terms of a rideable bike, so we went up to the near the Midlands, like south of Birmingham, met my parents at the weekend, had a, had a roast. On the way back, took the scenic route with my new sat nav here. I'll do a thing on that at some point, maybe. Uh, the new sat nav, it's got a adventurous routing, they call it. Deliberately finds you all the twisty roads. So we thought we'll try that. I went around some of these different roads. And we found just the time when like, you're in a 60, you're stuck behind someone doing, a th doing 30 or something, and you're waiting for that opportunity to overtake. And with two of you on the 650, it felt like it never came. You never got that opportunity to overtake. It was always a bit underpowered for two people. With this, oh, it, this with two people, other than, you know, it is heavier, a lot heavier. But in terms of power and also in terms of brakes, this with two people on feels like the 650 with just me. So this is a lot more rideable, you know, for road trips and stuff like that. But also, crucially being the adventure model, hopefully hasn't lost that ability to go a little bit off-road. I mean, it's heavier, it's less chuckable. I'm not going to be doing, you know, the same sorts of stuff necessarily as you might do on like a trials bike or a motocross bike, but it is off-road, it's got a tires, it's got a lot of travel and that sort of thing. You know, we should be able to do something at least. I wanted a GPS unit for a few reasons. First of all, phones, I've not found a good app yet on the phone, to be honest. I've found a few okay apps on the phone, but none of them have been that good. And part of the reason for that, other than, you know, Apple Maps, I have found it's getting a lot, lot better. And I find it less obnoxious than Google Maps in terms of the voice. But I've not 
really had the best of luck with it being that easy to follow. It tends to make you get a bit confused or like it'll give you confusing directions sometimes. This is actually a lot better than that. Uh, but also, why is it on most phone navigation apps, especially Google Maps and Apple Maps, you can't just have a map. You have to have directions. And what if I wanted to explore? What if I want to know whether you know it's worth exploring down that way or not? without having to put a destination. Half the time I'm going for a ride because I fancy it, not because I have anywhere to actually go. And that's what I want. I've not got a destination plugged into this at the moment. I've just got it in tell me where I am mode. Not tell me where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Tell me where I am. So that's pretty good. Uh, and also, I read into all the quad lock things and there's some reviews. I know they've got Chris Froome and Charlie Borman on the payroll doing the uh, why you should buy... Yeah, all right, mate. You got your exhaust. Why you should buy a quad lock and yeah, why it's great. And they have got the vibration dampener. They have got all the bells and whistles nowadays. But I still just don't trust that kind of product with a very expensive phone. A phone where if it does get broken, you, know, you lose your stabilization, it still works as a phone. But if you come off and it gets smashed or you come off and you're miles from the bike and you've not got it next to you, that's not so good. It's not something you can really do without these days because you might need to call for help or something. So the sat is a lot more robust like this one. And also it's just, you know, it's something else that, yeah, if it does get broken, it isn't my phone. If it gets nicked, it isn't my phone. It's something else I'm not relying on my battery having to be either charged up all the time and that's when the battery tends to uh, get a bit hot. And I have found my phone turning its screen off and overheating when I've been trying to charge it and use navigation at the same time on, on a bike, especially in, you know, in the sun when the sun's bearing down. The problem with that, of course, is it turns the screen off first as a, a safety measure, which means you can't glance down and see the directions. And if you miss the audible directions because you've got the intercom on, then you have no idea where you're going. So uh, that's not what I want. So I thought, you know, let's go with a dedicated sat nav. It, it has one job and it should do it well. And uh, so far, so good. It's pretty, pretty good actually so far. Let's see if we can make it through here without being killed. Bloody hell, what's coming out of that polo? I should have gone around that focus, but never mind. I managed to shift the 650. Um, I managed to get a good, uh, you know, about what I was hoping for for it, actually. That was nice. Uh, nice chap from uh, from Wales and his, and his son came along. They'd asked plenty of questions beforehand, you know, basically checking, um, are they going to be okay to ride it back? You know, one of them drives home, the one rides it home. So I kicked a bit, you know, we did the usual chit chat and turns out they've seen a couple of videos, so thanks for watching. Um, and next thing I know, old fashioned brown paper envelope full of money in, our, in my hand and uh, away we go. So uh, if only they were all as, as smooth as that. So um, that was great. Glad that's gone to, uh, to a nice home. And uh, yeah, I mean, nothing wrong with the 650 at all. As I said before, it's just for what I'm using it for, I, I was ready to graduate up to a bigger bike. But yeah, so this is the new one. Much like the 650 with its hanging and uh, loud single, this is also quite agricultural. Apparently Honda refer to these as the Bavarian tractor. Oops. Also, if you get off the throttle a bit sharp like I did there accidentally, uh, the engine braking is what I call robust. Um, it's pretty good. I, I do like good engine braking. You know, if I want to come up to a, a corner, and like this one coming up here, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's a bit tight, isn't it? So I'm just going to just ease off. Oh, mind him. Yeah, pulling a bit. Ease off. And it's like having the brakes gently on. The amount I slowed down there, and I never, at no point there, did I even doubt the brakes. I did there a bit because of the bump. But uh, generally speaking, I don't find myself reaching for the brakes just to, you know, ease the speed down. Because... It just does it for you. The engine braking is just terrific, it really is. One thing I have noticed as well, despite the knobbly tyres, I'll have a look at those in a bit, it just goes into the corners. I mean, these are like, you know, this is a, a narrow road, not going to go too quick, but you put it into the corners and it just leans over. You just sort of dab a, you know, a tiny bit of canter steer and you're in the corner. The 650 would not do that. It, it had the big, bulbous, roundish tyres. And it just felt like it was an effort to instigate the lean. And when you're in the lean, it was even more of an effort to keep it there. All it wanted to do was go upright. Whereas with this, this will just hold a lovely corner. You can bank it over and ah, oh, it's just, ah, oh, it's, it's a really nice bike to ride. Normally tires on the motorway, they are a bit loud, it must be said. But, you know, it's not too bad. I've got some rubbers on the foot pegs, so the vibration isn't as bad as it could be. Um, it could be better, I'm sure, but hey, it's pretty good. 
So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really chuffed so far to be honest. This is, uh, it, it's ticked all the boxes. It's what I want it to be. And yeah, oh, it's just, it sounds nice. I, mean, I haven't really like cracked it up properly much at least, but it, oh, it does sound nice. The 650, I mean, singles don't really, other than that thumping at the, the low end, they don't sound nice. They're not raw. They don't, they don't push you into going a bit quicker or anything like that. They don't make you want to rev it. This has got like a nice rorty twin sound. Oh, makes you smile a bit. Yeah, the, the, the smiles per cc on this are pretty good and it's got a lot of cc's, let me tell you. Can it keep up with the smiles per cc on my dad's little Honda? Well, can anything. That's 70 cc and big smiles all around. Has this got best part of 20 times the, the smiles? Well, you know what? It's probably not that far off, actually. It is good. It is fun. Just want to go some, you know, do a road trip or go somewhere on it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Every time, every so often, we go along a nice twisty road. The, the sat nav GPS speedometer it just seems to start reading it really fast for some reason. You know, it just goes way out of calibration. I don't know what it is. It's ever so strange. You can see the, the screen's completely covered in uh, dead flies and stuff. Sacrifice to the god of speed. Yeah, that sun in the eyes is a bit annoying, isn't it? Probably in your eyes as well. Um, let's see if I can go away from the sun for a bit. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm taking the uh, the village people's advice at the moment. I'm going west. The suspension is quite quite hefty. It doesn't really bounce all that much. So the damping is fine. I mean, it's 50,000 miles. I don't know if the shocks have been serviced at any point. I've not got paperwork to show that they have. Um, maybe I haven't done one day. But I mean, it handles fine, and I, I don't feel any loss of damping. So. I don't have any real problem with them at the moment, but it's just the, the unsprung weight ratio. Like it's so heavy, but the wheels aren't particularly heavy. So you tend to find that you go over a bump and thing. It's like a magic carpet. The, the frame doesn't change height. The wheels just move to compensate. <laughs> it's uh, it's great. It makes it very very comfortable over bumpy terrain. You can just go. Oh, that's a nice vista, isn't it? What a lovely view. You fly over the UK sometimes, you know, if you come in to land somewhere in the UK and you look out the window and you sort of think, actually, it's a ridiculously green place. dramatically see I wasn't chucked back there I didn't feel like I was about to fall off the back of the thing I didn't feel like I was you know like whoa let's rein it in whoa boy whoa silver it wasn't anything like that it was just smooth collected evening smooth collected power delivery no nonsense very efficient very German straight to the point here we go we're shifting and that was it doesn't need to be anything more than that sometimes does it yeah, how many uh, off-road bikes can you kind of, you know, chuck into a corner like, like this and enjoy the road? There's a bit of a bad trope about these never seeing a bit of gravel in their life. Uh, and yeah, there's definitely some, some truth to that. But you know what? They're such good touring bikes, that's the thing. And if you do ever want to dabble in a bit of off-road stuff, well, why not? They wouldn't let me ride down there, though, would they? That's one of the problems in the UK at the moment, well... And, and, and forevermore, it's not getting any better. There's nowhere to ride off-road unless it's private land, pretty much. They're doing their best to close the green lanes. And the problem is, it's like with anything, it's like the people who think all youths are bad. People uh, blame responsible motorcycle riders, such as myself, for ruining these trails. And it might be those jobos on the unregistered pit bikes. So closing it as a legal road won't make a difference because they weren't supposed to be there anyway. They weren't legally riding the bikes. The trouble is that the legit uh, off-road motorbike riders who are interested in conserving the trails, being respectful, those of us who see a horse coming, pull over and knock the engine off, kind of, you know, get all our green lanes taken away. The trouble is you find yourself trying to reason with people who just don't want to listen. And that's where it all kind of breaks down a bit, I think. But uh, see if you can see over there, oh, there's uh, Avonmouth and the big wind turbines. So this is my back brake. 
Although that's the ABS kicking in there, so it's doing something. But the back brake is, and I think it's kind of known for this on these bikes, the back brake is basically non-existent. Um, the front does a lot of the work. But in fairness, you've got two huge discs up front and one tiny thing at the back. Oh, a bit of fresh air. This is where I'll get a face full of gnats now, isn't it? Got my nice bell staffs on and I wasn't really planning on getting them muddy. So let's hope we don't uh, come across too much mud. Right, I'll just stop for the, uh, the horse. Oops. No worries. Oh, no. Okie dokie. This is actually a very comfortable bike to stand on now. I've got these fatter pegs on. Very nice. There is a bit of a shudder as I come to a halt sometimes on normally on smooth tarmac. Doesn't do it on rough gravel and things. And I think it's just the knobbly tyres because they are quite knobbly and you get a bit of a resonance. So I think it's just that. The, uh, the headlights, um, probably can't see much of them now. It's not dark enough really. Uh, people moan that these headlights are absolute crap. Um, they do look like Roger Moore, which is kind of cool. I think the headlights are pretty good because I've come from the 650 and I also have an Alpha GTV, both of which had headlights that's like having a candle in a brown bottle. So to be honest, I'm quite happy with these head with the headlight on this. I want to stop somewhere just to give you a quick look at this bike. I think here might be a good place to do it. Okay, this is a quick helmet walk around. Didn't bother bring my other camera. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty cool. Got my sheepskin on, full of flies, but yeah, it's hefty that's what i like to call it and nice bit of luggage on here room for bits of stuff in there not a lot in there isn't luggage i am looking out for some matching panniers but they're rare as hen's teeth so this is it as you can see it's pretty big it's the adventure model big 33 litre tank taller suspension big f off crash bars hella nice uh, big lights on the front the uh, signature roger moore look the headlights, pretty knobbly tyres, you can imagine these on the motorway make plenty of noise. A big disc on the front, two of those, smaller single one on the back. Uh, these rubbers come off, nice flat, foot pegs, lots of grip, brake pedal extender, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, otherwise, it's all, uh, all pretty cool. Big chunky tie on the back as well. I've got my Garmin sat nav mounted on there, nice little plate um, mounted underneath or bolted underneath from Germany. Uh, I think it's Cosmo is the uh, person's name who made that. It's pretty cool. Big box of twin down there. And that's where all the weight is really. The weight, even though you've got your fuel tank up top, big and it's full, um, heavy thing. The weight's down there. That's where all your weight is, which keeps it nice and stable when you stood up because all the weight's right down below you. That's really nice. Proper Ewan McGregor spec, this is. So uh, let's see if I can get on this thing without... Uh, I should be a kung fu movie. That's pretty good. Oh, that's not good. What the hell happened there? Oh, that was a bit weird. What the happened there? Well, oh, never mind. Um, it did lose the clock a while ago, actually. Um, I don't know. Dodgy wire somewhere, maybe? Ah, who knows. Okie dokie, back on the road, back on the road. I'm going to pretend that never happened, and uh, if it happens again, I'll look into what it might be. But electrics are weird. Sometimes with bikes, even with electrics, these things tend to either get worse and you find out what it is, or they go away. But yeah, so this is an intro to my A1150 GS. And yeah, I hope that was <laughs> something worth watching. I'm going to say goodnight now, I think. Time for me to head back and put the tea on. Sophie's down the gym, I think. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. I won't see you in the next one. I'm behind the camera. Oh, in front of the camera. You'll see me in the next one. So yeah, thank you for watching and cheerio.